गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन वेलकम टू मीटिंग नंबर टू नाइनटी फाइव ऑफ टर्निंग पॉइंट टोस्ट मास्टर्स आई एम स्नेहा से विश्वास साल टाइम्स फॉर टूडे we provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills resulting in greater self confidence and personal growth you are now inside the code of conduct of a toastmaster meeting please be advised that this is this meeting is being recorded and that it may not be possible to pause the recording the following are the meeting rules please be advised that any behavior that disturbs the flow of the meeting will re- result in removal from the meeting room without any warning please ensure that your noise making devices are either switched off or on silent mode please speak responsibility on re- re- religion sex and politics in your speeches as far as possible please keep your videos on and audio off and applause flowing throughout be the kind of audience for others you would like to have your for yourself toast master of the day table topic master and general evaluator please ensure a smart audio video check before handing over to respective role players role players please rename yourself as role player your uh, your name your club name you may omit the name if you are a member of turning point to post masters please acquaint yourself with the uh, role of the timer the timer will use background change screen sharing to in- or screen sharing to indicate the time using one of three cards green means that you have reached the minimum qualifying time yellow indicates that it is good time to start concluding red specifies that you have 30 seconds more or you will be disqualified individual session timing will be explained in due time uh, we encourage you to use the zoom emoticons generously to encourage role players we sincerely request you not to send chat messages messages to everyone for, or the speaker on stage in fact refrain from chatting all together and focus on the speaker polls uh, uh, polls will be launched after each section and they will be closed after 30 seconds please stay on mute until specifically requested to unmute now i would like to introduce our presiding officer madhav upadhyay who is also newly elected presiding of uh, elected president of our club he is also served as vp pr in last term of executive committee over to you madhav thank you to smashish nayashish and uh, i am not newly elected any anymore i think uh, and uh, all the ec committee that goes for all the ec committee members as well uh but that being said i would like to welcome you all in the another meeting in yet another meeting of turning point toast masters and uh we have quite a few guests joining us in today's meeting we have uh iti kapoor joining us who is joining us for the very first time then we have toast master ashima tehan joining us from blue quest toast master club who is also playing role then we have we have toastmaster pallavi bajoria from uh, from spirit toastmaster club and we also have someone a guest who is returning to us returning to our club after a long time toastmaster anju pradhan welcome uh, toastmaster anju pradhan pradhan and welcome everyone uh, do stay till the end of the meeting we will be taking uh, we'll be asking you to introduce yourself properly and then uh, asking some feedback towards the end of the meeting uh, so do stay and coming to today's theme of the meeting it is going to be around uh, international speech contest so for those who are uh, very new to toastmasters uh, toastmaster international uh, in 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 toastmasters clubs contests are conducted at various levels one of them is prepared speech contest where people come and give prepared speeches and they are being evaluated by a team of evaluators and this happens at different levels so uh, with that background i would like to i would like to hand over the stage to someone who is uh who is very uh, very expert at it i would say that and uh, who has been in toastmaster for 11 years so he would be the right person uh, to let us all know about isc and let us all know how can we do better at international speech contest and he is also the district chief judge of district 41 so i would like to hand over the stage to toastmaster anand katyani distinguished toastmaster anand katyani anand thank you so much madhav please confirm if i am audible yes and visible you are thank you uh, may i also request you before we begin to share your uh, co-host access with someone else as well in the meeting maybe general evaluator so that they can uh, flip between the spotlighting duties while you 
dual uh, play multiple roles uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, thank you to madhav by the way uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, madhav has exaggerated uh, talking about me uh, 11 years is nothing when it comes to the global experience of many seasoned and veteran toastmasters across the forget about the world uh, across district 41 itself there are many more who have been uh, double the veteran uh, that my humble self can call upon myself the reason being uh, in toastmasters it should not be counted in years the experience should be counted in in terms of how many times you have had a stage opportunity we have some people in our club who have not just walked or ran they have sprinted towards their educational goals our, our table topic master today is one such person shrishti marotra there are many other people who have grown in leadership capacities uh, madhav upadhyay anju pradhan uh, these are the people uh, who i look up to when i say this sentence uh, not to you priyanka mishra the nalayak one all right she is my mentee uh, that's on me then i was not pushy enough <laughs> jokes aside uh, this is a session where i want everyone whether a member an external member or even a guest like iti to feel at home toastmasters has a system called contests where we recognize the best and the brightest among our clubs then areas then divisions and districts and then across uh, the world on the global stage uh the contest start at club level go through all these levels culminates in something called as wcps it's a registered keyword world championship of public speaking where uh, our own rupinder singh distinguished host master he has been at the semi final levels of it so as i was saying toastmasters should count their experience in terms of how many times you have had a stage opportunity and no stage opportunity is more pristine than in an isc international speech contest our club will have its isc contest on 19th of february that's a sunday uh, the reason sh for shifting from 18th to 19th is uh, on 18th we have uh, the area contests going on as well as it's a shivratri festival so 19th is where we are keeping the date so everyone uh, try to Uh, keep yourself free around that time in online mode uh, srishti something you want yeah, to add yeah i wanted to ask is in 19th the date for the table topics contest as well uh for table topics contest we have had right in yeah for level. yeah so the next one uh, i think maybe we did it last time uh do not worry about it uh, 18th and 19th the area contest they are happening in the evening time while our club contest will happen in the morning time so nothing to be clashing over there don't worry uh so the the contest of international speech contest there are so many myths about it while madhav priyanka anshuman uh, i'm not sure about ashima but please confirm if you have also done uh these people have taken part in that uh, shrishti and a few others will be taking part for the very first time and uh, sneha shish and a few others will be taking part maybe in uh, the next cycle because there is a requirement of level 2 completion i am unable to take part this year because i am a district officer in a non credit capacity so is the case with anju i guess so no you are an area director right no i am the club growth director and they have given all right all right opportunity. yes so good luck for you then so the point here is there are a few myths where i want you to also add on to it uh, before we head into the main session of the meetings which are a prepared speech session where we have two fantastic speakers then a short table topic session and then an general evaluation session where we get the feedback so before uh, uh, we go into the main session just want to touch upon a few myths about the international speech contest and this is primarily for our first time uh, participants towards that how many of you have heard that an isc speech has to be a motivational speech 
So Shashti has heard about that. Priyanka, Ashima. What do you think, Anshuman? Does it have to be a motivational speech? Not necessarily. It has to be a good speech compliant with the guidelines. And uh, just touching upon that, uh, don't you think any speech, even if it's a stand-up comedian speech, uh, it's inherently motivational and persuasive and informative and entertaining? All these four elements are present in every speech, unless someone is hellbent on death by PPT. Uh, so apart from that, every speech has all these four elements and uh, less or more quantities. These are the four specific purposes for your speech. The trick here is to have one specific purpose towards which we are delivering this speech. That should be there from the beginning to middle part to conclusion to the title to even your dressing sense to even your body movements on the stage, on camera, your subtle variations in pitch, tone, tonality, the pace, uh, everything. So all the vocal, verbal, visual elements should contribute towards achievement of that purpose. That is one single most important criteria for even judges of the ISC speech. While there are many other elements, but this is the part that I as a judge look personally for. What was that one single line of essence of the speech? Do we remember that after hearing the speech? Do we remember after hearing all the speakers in the contest about that speaker? Uh, you must be remembering a few speeches in the past of past world champions. I see something in you by Dhananjay Hetarachi. Uh, there are a few others where uh, not the message, but the gesture or the keyword that pops up in the mind. I don't want to refer here the main, uh, the, the Toastmaster speeches or the past champion. I'll just go back to prove my point with a childhood story that all of us have heard. And I just want you to think of the story and realize it's not the learning, it's the story which was the important part. Learning happened along the way. Slow and steady wins the race. Do we all get triggered with the story in the mind? It had a very simple single linear message. No multiple messages. Single message, singular message. Now, slow and steady wins the race might not have clicked with us when we were children, but I'm sure as adults, today we realize it was the story, which was the main thing, but the learning that happened after the story, that was condensed in this moral of the story. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is how a speech has to be made, not necessarily overtly motivational, like those TEDx speeches or, you know, Josh talks, etc. It has to be a speech. If it's funny, the better because it connects with people. If it's persuasive, well, hell yeah, that's the objective. If it's informative, what better stage to inform or educate the world with your viewpoint about a cause or a personal message. Uh, but inherently, if you have one single line of message, your story, your delivery of it, will connect with someone or the other, if not all. And that will be the true success of your ISV speech. I remember when I delivered a speech about my marital life of two years, how we went through our ups and downs. Uh, while I did not win the contest at a district final that day, I remember uh, five, six newlywed couples, they came to me and they said, well, that's our story, bro. And that's where that high five, that became memorable for me because I achieved my purpose, maybe with a few people. Uh, we will connect over a few more myths as well as tips on this ISC speech, how to go about it, what topics to be picked up, how do you go about the process. Uh, as a first timer, your uh, world championship preparation begins your, at your club level itself. So I will give you some practical tips and tips on that. Uh, but before we go on that let's jump into our main sections of the meeting we have three sections as i said and the general evaluation section towards the end will be managed today by a first time role player the rock star of the club the sergeant at arms the local boy for me of my own hometown nowadays snehashish biswas snehashish let's have you on the spotlight let's quickly check if you're audible and visible am i audible 
Yeah, yes, you are audible, you are visible and ready to go. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Good evening, everyone. My name is Niyazi Biswas, your general evaluator for today. I have with my team who is going to evaluate the whole meeting. Uh, starting with, uh, I have two uh, evaluator who will who is going who will introduce in the due time of the meeting, and I also have two uh, role players, timer and grammarian. Starting with grammarian, grammarian for today is Asma. Uh, Asma is currently residing at Jhansi, joined Toastmaster four months back, who believes in building relationships, supporting growth, and creating experiences. She will record. Uh, she will. Uh, she will record all the bad usages and good usages of grammar and pronunciations, and she will also give a word of the day for our meeting. So I will. I want to. Uh, I want to ha uh, hand over the stage to uh, Grammarian Asma. Over to you, Toastmaster Asma. Can you please spotlight? She is spotlighted. Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster Sneha Shish. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests. As Cameroon, I, I shall note down the good usages and not so good usages of language, as well as grammatical errors made by the speakers and role players. Uh, it's also my duty to provide a word of the day, and the word of the day is pertinent, which means relevant or applicable to a particular matter. I'm repeating the word, it's pertinent. Pertinent means relevant or applicable to a particular matter. Its synonyms are relevant, uh, appropriate, suitable, and its antonyms are irrelevant, improper, inapplicable. And an example of it is, she had asked some pertinent questions. I request everyone to acknowledge the usage of the word with a thumbs up. I'll submit my report in the evaluation session. Thank you. Over to you, uh, Toastmaster Sneha Shish. Thank you, Grammarian uh, Toastmaster Asma, for the word of the day. Now, I would like to uh, introduce our timer. Timer for today is Madhav. As I already introduced, introduced him, he will uh, he will so uh, as I already introduced him, he will show different cards at the various junctions of meeting. Uh, for example, for speaker, he will show green card at five minute, yellow card at uh, yellow as he is showing, yellow card at six minute. And red card at uh, seven minutes. For table topics, he will show green card at one minute and yellow card at one minute thirty seconds and red card at two minutes. Uh, in topic in table topics session, every speaker has to speak minimum for one minute and maximum for two minutes thirty seconds. If he speak less than one minute or two minutes or beyond two minutes thirty seconds, then he will be disqualified for poll purposes. And for uh, evaluator of uh, uh, prepared speakers, he will show green card at two minute and yellow card at Two minutes thirty seconds and red card at three minutes. Okay, thank you, timer for the cards. So that's it from my side. Uh, I will come back with my reports at the end of the meeting. So over to you, Toshma, for the evening. Thank you so much, uh, Sneha Shish, for that fantastic introduction to what you are going to do with your team today. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give them another round of applause and all the very best for their roles, especially to Sneha Shish, who will be taking this major role today for the very first time. And this boy is just making us proud every single meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have two amazing speakers. It's rarity to have uh, two such warm, gentle, and yet impactful personalities taking up prepared speeches. I just wish we had more speakers today, but don't worry, we will have it recorded for the longer duration and we will definitely share it uh, on demand with you guys as well. Uh, the first speaker today will be our own Anshuman Mishra, uh, who will have a 15 to 20 minute of speech. And this will be a special project. This will be a project where he will tell us something new and well, have a question and answer session about it. To introduce more about this speech and the speech objectives, may I invite his evaluator, Madhav Upadhyay, to introduce the content. Madhav, can we have you on the spotlight? Yes, Toastmaster Anant. Toastmaster Anshuman is attempting level four of project two of presentation, presentation mastery path. 
and uh, the purpose of this project is for toastmaster anshuman is to learn about practice facilitating a question and answer session and uh, to practice delivering an informative speech and running a well organized question and answer session uh, the toastmaster anshuman is also responsible for managing time so there is an adequate opportunity for both the question answer session and the speech uh, that's about it uh, all the best toastmaster anshuman looking forward to your uh, speech thank you so much madhav uh, a request you to spotlight me and anshuman both because i want to introduce him in a unique manner now how many of you remember those annoying ankur variku ads on youtube so whenever uh, those ads come for time management or this course or that course or how to have an online course a course on that itself uh, all those videos i want to be angry on it but i can't because of the personality that the the way of speaking that mr ankur variku a famous entrepreneur has and anshuman mishra reminds me of that way of talking he always hits the nail hard while tapping it gently and while we are talking about ankur variku he is an entrepreneur anshuman mishra is also going to talk about how to run a business today well yeah in literal sense ladies and gentlemen presenting to you speaker one anshuman mishra how to run a business how to run a business anshuman mishra there are three things top of the mind of any indian uh, corporate employee or indian youngster one is ankur varikus ads second is shark tank india and third is layoffs so what is the what is the connecting link between all the three it is entrepreneurship or it is jobs and entrepreneurs usually are the job creators in the ecosystem how many of us have a deep desire to be an entrepreneur only one person okay we have ashima we have madhav anju shristi priyanka are not interested i think they i think uh, everyone may have different priorities but in the heart of it there are definitely pros and cons to becoming an entrepreneur today what we'll be experimenting is doing a case study of can all of us run a company and scale it to bigger heights together it's going to be a q and a session it's going to be an interactive session so we're going to take a company and scale it to bigger heights and just visualize how we can run it scaling from say a one member company to a thousand member company are you all open to doing that okay perfect all right so if i am a shark tank uh, participant and i have a company have an idea i go to the panel with an idea and let's say it's a toastmasters related idea where i start a company which is proficient in making lot of leaders and lot of great public speakers i and say madhav shristi anju ashima and priyanka also if she wants to come along <laughs> with say distinguished host master anand as uh, as our mentor go and ask for uh, 1 million dollars as the initial fund raising company so what what do you think will be the initial key priorities that the sharks will be looking for and us as a company as a small uh, small and medium business should prioritize to ensure that is set up for success maybe top 3 things i can start with madhav who's a chartered accountant and must be proficient in all everything related to business nothing like that but i would say that uh, i would say that one of the priority would be to dilute as less equity as we can as in in exchange of 1 million dollars what are we going to give it how much equity we are going to give to the sharks as in 1% of the company 2% of the company 10% of the company so valuation <laughs> as in should be uh, valuation as in should be determined in a better way <laughs> i am sorry for going very technical no madhav is already concerned about his future stake in the company he is not concerned about building the company he is not concerned about what the company will deliver he is just concerned when the company becomes 1000 crore if i have given 1% equity to mr anupam then he'll have 1% of that value 
so great thought mathav you are already thinking about your profits in the future but anyhow uh, how about the company itself especially you had a thought no uh, my thought was that whatever mathav explained went over my head which is what i was saying but i think uh, one of the so i i kind of started something on my own and that's why uh, i do not want to have something of my own ever again but uh, i think one of the biggest things that the company needs to be able to do is cover the costs and then let like have something like have a profit that people can also you know people who own the company who start the company can have so basically you should make more than you spend right i think that's a wisdom speaking uh, that can only come from a first hand experience and what if i can interpret what madhav was saying is that uh, if i have a stake of 100 in the company i only give away say 1 out of 100 value to another person so that in the future when i own that 99% value i'll gain 99% uh, profit out of it so madhav is already thinking that he'll dilute very minimum stake uh, to the sharks um uh, completely agree the in the financial aspect i think the profit should be more than cost if uh, i have to look at the basics of what initially any uh, startup should be focusing on is first the service and product and market fit what i by i am referring to that is there should be a demand in the market of that product or service and your product and service should be able to meet that demand at an appropriate cost which is profitable so for example if we had hypothetically had to make uh, trust masters profitable uh, though it is a non for profit uh, organization we'll check what is the demand for training and learning in the field of leadership and communication so through industry journals or research uh, articles or websites and figure out what the broader demand for that industry is within the country the region and obviously network in the right circles to understand uh, what the potential opportunity is and second build an excellent service or value like for example uh, every week we meet we catch up we have proper pathways we have uh, a structured meeting where there is a constant delivery of value and <clears throat> there is a sustained team working to deliver that value so that's the first aspect of it we del- we figure out what the industry demand is what the market is we create right product service to meet that demand ideally aligned with our passion or something which we can continue for a long time and ensure that the financials are in place as srishti mentioned uh, the profit should be more than uh, sustainable profits and as madhav alluded to the fact that don't dilute so much of your company that uh, that literally it's owned by another individual all right so we have built a company and we have the foundation in place then it starts scaling so from a small company you start for example hire 100 folks based out of different regions in india so one in delhi one in mumbai one in hyderabad one in chennai one in singapore so then what will be your consideration you move from becoming a small company to a medium sized company what will be your bigger thoughts and you, you have your products working you have services working you have a sustainable profit you have sustainable uh, demand how as an entrepreneur will you evolve any initial thoughts for example toastmasters is not just in gurgaon in delhi in noida in mumbai and globally in i don't know how 170 countries now so <clears throat> what will be your consideration when things start scaling any top 3 priorities any ideas ashima what do you think will be the priority just take a stab at it right like you are a ceo of a, a scaled company in multiple cities you as a ceo what will be your top 3 things you'll think about <laughs> Yes. i'll just think about the uh, which problem i wanted to solve mm-hmm. uh, that is um, what i am going to focus on and um, then second is my customer service 
so um, that i that is that is my uh, top most priority where i wanted to satisfy my customers so that they can you know they should have a very good experience and they'll come again to me or they can refer my company to other and um, the third is my employee satisfaction if these three will be good then i think that uh, i don't even need to think about the profit it will come by on you know that's uh, i go with the excellent and then things will come started following you so that's what i will thought of it beautiful that's a great answer i think i feel you already are running secretly a, a <laughs> एवरी <laughs> 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 So you're right. sure you the right management everywhere who's focusing mm-hmm. on these uh, right. CSAT on mm-hmm. employee satisfaction and the financial aspects of it at scale. So slowly mm-hmm. you'll start scaling. Correct. Honestly, I don't have a company, so I'm also brainstorming along with you. <laughs> But at the same time, uh, I think we all are intelligent mm-hmm. enough to understand what what is right and wrong and. Uh, Anand, please do enlighten us because I think you've had uh, much more experience. No, I also that. don't run a company. <laughs> I also don't have a company on that scale to run as of now. Uh, but I do have the simulations of it in my batches when I train people. And from mentoring one batch of let's say fifty people, now I have been uh, on and off mentoring close to two thousand people actively. and the way i maintain a line of communication is uh, because i invest in training the right people to replace me once i am gone and i create the mini me's so in your situation the the point that you raise that once you graduate from uh, a successful entrepreneur in one city to a scalable company with multiple uh, you know presence across multiple cities you need all those mini me's of your own versions or that much capable people in all these cities and your job will be to delegate and to provide a vision and that is how you let the right people take care of the job uh, along the same time i partially agree with ashima yes uh, it's not the numbers or the matrices or the financials which will matter it will uh, what will matter is retention of the people the right people the talent in the company because they are your core assets if you have employees who are happy with their career progression not just their current job they see a value in staying with the company they will create the business for you they will ensure that the clients will have repeat businesses uh, and and new consumers and new customers keep coming and going but the real value in a business is brought by the repeat customers uh trust uh, take it by example of toastmasters as a not so profit not for profit but still as a business an organization to run if you have an area director that person becomes a division director that person becomes a district director uh, then only an organization is sustained with their uh, experience retained within and that is how multiple clubs who have had a past association they continue to renew uh, if every year new ad comes and the past ads they just go out of the system Uh, the members will also keep churning out so investing in the people that's the business that i want to advocate for definitely anand you hit all the right pointers and madhav uh, uh, over to you for any quick insights i think i i certainly agree with the first part of what anand spoke about naval gavikant a very famous entrepreneur says that replication of product is the key in today's world so if you can replicate uh, a product with just you know for example if all the IT, big it companies what if they are selling a software they just have to replicate every software and they just need to sell it whereas if you are selling a car you have to produce a different car a new car every, every time when you need to sell it so in today's world if you can replicate your services for example all these ad tech companies which are making uh, a lot of money nowadays they are replicating their product by just reaching out to make make reaching out to people through through web 
and so i would want uh, like for example if we want a platform like toastmaster we would not want we would not want for example in in one city we would want one center which can run online either or people can come to one center or if many cities can be covered with one center that's wonderful like cost will be much lesser in if the application is easy uh, definitely madhav uh, thank you anant madhav for sharing uh, those important pointers that scaling replicating yourself putting the right structure ensuring all the basics of finance hr marketing strategy operations are in place and their their standard operating procedures there is a right reporting mechanism where where we are able to track the data centrally of what everything of what is going on in different places and scaling in the right sustainable fashion ensuring that the company is profitable and is achieving the right mission vision goals uh, will start becoming important for us last but not the least the company becomes a blockbuster like similar to toastmasters it is spreading like wildfire it's in every country possible be it in nepal sri lanka india united states of america and you are a superstar entrepreneur visible all across the world similar to mr adani or mr ambani or mr bill gates then last but not the least what will be your biggest priority those master anju any thoughts of being a world leader ceo uh, well to become a world leader ceo i will uh, need a vision for my company and uh, take the uh, members of the company um, in as a team and move ahead i think that's all that i can say for now <laughs> definitely you. i think you have hit the right uh, nail on its head that the culture of the company will be very important for example for uh, toastmasters the irsc framework is what we live by that having the right respect integrity uh, quest for excellence and service is very crucial to every toastmaster uh, uh, participant and that is the binding factor usually in every company so be it the formal structure or the informal structure it becomes very important so informal aspects include uh, mission vision goals values um, strategy something which is not uh, strictly documented but is per pertinent within the organization that what do we live by together another aspect is the formal aspect which is more on the structural side that how the uh, global uh, organizational design works what is the role and responsibility what is the structure what is the global structure regional structure product structure service structure uh, then the finances start getting looked at uh, chartered accountancy scale and uh, madhav and team contribute to ensuring that the company is running fairly or unfairly uh, everything comes at scale you have a, a legal uh, consulting company to help you out you have a big force helping audit your company uh, you have a marketing organization at scale everything becomes at scale and things start moving at elephant pace and you know, strategic pace and anand you have something to add uh, i have a pertinent question to ask with your permission yes of course so the question is uh, what if the landscape suddenly shifts and if you are already a large scale global company and suddenly there is a uh, you know a twin tower attack or a 2008 recession or a civil war or a world war 3 or a covid outbreak uh, how do you plan for it and uh, what happens because that's a totally uncertain you know line of sight yes and that's a great question as per my understanding i think all the successful companies are usually living 10 to 15 years ahead Uh, for example say uh, facebook right now it's in a crisis situation however it's uh, use, orienting itself to 10 years ahead with its concept of metaverse how these companies operate is through a bet betting perspective 
that they placed like a gambler like bet on a te- upcoming technology like for example google is looking at uh, like uh, google through news uh, is looking at say uh, <laughs> so as an employee i can't speak uh, like i don't yeah. have to, not speak on behalf of the company but google may be looking at artificial intelligence uh, quantum computing so it's a and similarly facebook at metaverse amazon at drone delivery robotic delivery uh, like half an hour delivery so companies usually strategically are looking at 10 to 15 years ahead and betting on the same the quarterly performance uh, six month performance is usually on the hindsight and those tactical decisions are handled uh, on the basis of the real time uh, agility and adaptability is what i understand however for any company to be at scale successful has to usually orient uh, they keep on betting for example uh, kodak died down because they were very confident about the role digital role technology and did not orient themselves to digital photography when it uh, came to for similar to sony being confident about walkman uh, despite uh, itunes and ipods so they usually have to orient themselves 5 to 10 years ahead so a, a short follow up question on that and that is uh, uh, and that is maybe for not not just me but uh, uh, maybe like people like iti uh, prerna priyankas and sneashish who have a huge uh, who have a long life to work in the corporate sector for what if suddenly we were to uh, gain huge amount of money which business should we start as a future proof business what would you recommend i mean which domain or what type of business yes and also uh, if like if and like open to ideas from others as per my understanding a uh, basic human needs will always remain so looking at the maslow's uh, hierarchy the roti kapda makan which is basically food uh, food water shelter and clothing uh, going up to self esteem level if we look at uh, healthcare sector if we look at education sector if we look at real estate sector anything related to basic human needs will be uh, a perennial uh, sustainable <coughs> uh, sustainable industry where if uh, invested in the right place it's it's a very safe bet but if one has to bet uh, on a on emerging technologies then it has to be something related to artificial intelligence and um, and uh, big data or like insights on anything that helps humanity at its self esteem level so maslow's hierarchy is something i look at and look at uh, parallel industries which are helping it out uh, to invest um that's one framework to look at but uh, keeping updated about industry journals industry uh, industry guides and networking with the right people who who are good at visioning for example bill gates is pretty good at envisioning 15 years down the line all his books are usually 20 years ahead and he's able to, he has been able to predict a lot of future technologies right so that is how i'll orient myself and right, i think we are uh, pretty much out of time i think very easy session for me to just listen to your ideas and summarize it <laughs> but rest assured i prepped up for it and <laughs> the mother will say otherwise anyhow for me to just share my thoughts and obviously learn from all of you i hope all of us or one of us is able to build a big scale company and all of us are able to be proud of it and remember this session that through this session we were able to emulate building a big company in the future thank you over to you distinguished host master and Wow! Can we have a huge round of applause for our in-house Ankur Variku? <laughs> well, uh, that would be understatement because the way you have facilitated the session, uh, it has given many of us good insights. And the biggest, biggest learning that I have had is it's so effortless to talk around such complex topics if you have a clarity in your own head. Thank you so much, Anshuman, for educating us 
in a non so boring not so boring and engaging manner that's huge uh, you know uh, skill displayed over there ladies and gentlemen take quick 30 to 60 seconds to shower your appreciations on anshuman mishra in private chat and if there is any area of improvement that you want to recommend do that as well while we maintain the silence for the speaker to receive feedback uh, just a humble reminder and warm welcome to ayusha gupta mandeep kaur iti kapoor prerana dhingra uh, and pallavi bajoria who are not playing any role and diana of course who are not playing any role as of now uh, to be ready for the table topic session after the next speaker do stay over let's move ahead let's move ahead um, our second speaker for the day is coming straight from nepal she is a person who has attended our meetings in the past and every time she speaks well the time just flies by just like what we heard from anshuman this lady is going to put double the efforts today because she has stood up against a very animated background the green screen while i will introduce her speech title soon time now for her evaluator to rise and shine priyanka mishra from hyderabad on the screen for you priyanka hi how are you hi hi anand how are you i'm good okay go ahead priyanka okay uh hello everyone are the objectives of our speaker is pertinent to the theme of the meeting yes the speaker is going to attempt her isc speech that's why she wants to focus on the content delivery and the language and today we are giving more specific focus on the content part that which are covering the speech development effectiveness and the speech value time up please note that the, the time of the speech will be 5 to 7 minutes thank you over to you uh, anand thank you so much priyanka thank you for sharing those objectives in that nice manner as well uh, audience you also please make notes and pass on your appreciations as well as any specific suggestion that you want to give to the speaker anju after the speech in private chat we'll have one minute for that uh, anju let's have a quick audio video check am i audible and visible Yes, you have been spotlighted. You are audible. You are visible. You are completely in frame. Uh, timer. May I request you to show a grey screen right in the beginning instead of changing it in between. Since she is practicing, yes. Since she is practicing for ISC speech, uh, Anju, are you able to look at the timing signals? Yes, it is. Now it's red. It's white now. great so uh, all set are you good to go do you want to check anything else it's okay. great anju pradhan is going to talk about a very pertinent question in all our lives and ladies and gentlemen that question is about balance here you go anju pradhan the art of balance the art of balance anju pradhan stand at is attention stand at ease attention this is what we did in school assemblies and physical training exercises never had i thought that we can apply the same principle in the hustle and bustle of our life those master anshuman have you ever thought that we can be attentive and yet be at ease no well if you ask me my answer would be a yes when i was 6 years old i suffered from chest infection i could not attend school and play outside as i stayed in bed doing nothing besides coughing random thoughts raced inside my head i started feeling sad I asked the hero of my life my father papa 
what if there is no sun, moon, and the stars? What if there is no God? Will we all die? My father took me in his lap, looked into my sad eyes and said, no darling, the universe is within us. God is always with us. This assurance instantly brought back my happiness. The waste boiling thoughts ceased. The six-year-old me grew up to be a doctor just like my father. I was walking through the flow of my life. One day, I received a letter from the dean office stating that I was appointed as the deputy coordinator for the medical program. Excited but unaware of my job, I went to the coordinator, a senior professor seeking guidance. Do not dare to enter the coordinator office. Concentrate working in your own department. I work in an academic institute. Some of us are given additional responsibilities. But sir, I said, go back to your department. The atmosphere was such that I did not get an opportunity to work and grow in the pertinent job. Life comes with variety. We are busy playing different roles in our life as family members, relatives, friends, and professional colleagues. We strive hard to unname fame and money. We bet our happiness on the materialistic things. We end up becoming unhappy on the process of making others happy. But karma comes back at its own pace. Two years later, I was appointed as the coordinator of the same office. However, everything was taken away. I had to start from a scratch. I spent days in anguish, but I rebuilt that office. I worked in it for five years. To date, it is still considered as one of the most well-organized offices of our institute. Hate, anger, jealousy, outweigh love, happiness, and kindness. The disbalance of these emotions led me to a point in my life where I couldn't handle stress anymore. Information technology has made the world smaller and brought us all closer. The distance from the earth to the sun, moon, and the stars has come closer. However, distance between human hearts has gone wider. This is because of a game we human beings love to play, the game of hatred and jealousy. We are busy climbing stairs, but are we aware of the steps falling off our feet? In 2018, I got an opportunity to attend a spiritual retreat program. The program showed a new dimension, the art of balancing in a self. I remember the words of my father, the world is within us. Since then, spirituality has helped me erase the negative thoughts and replace the vacuum created with positive ones. Since then, serenity is my key when there is a storm outside. People often ask me, why spirituality at this age? It is something you think about only when you grow old. For me, spirituality is my inner world and science is the outer world. How can I stay away from my inner self as I step out to explore the outer? 
Albert Einstein has said, science without religion is lame and religion without science is blind. The art of balancing science and spirituality is the key to a peaceful life. Science gives facts and figures. Spirituality gives experience. Both are equally important to have a meaningful life. But hey, spirituality doesn't mean you shut yourself from the outer world. It is about exploring your inner self. It is the equilibrium of the external and the internal self. It is the art of replace, replacing hatred with love, ego with respect, anger with peace, and expectation with acceptance. Go ahead and love yourself. Embrace yourself with respect and care. Love the people around you. Respect them. We as doctors often tell our students and patients, prevention is better than cure. So why wait until we suffer? Attention, but with ease. Master Toastmaster. Attention, but with ease. Anju Pradhan, thank you for those meaningful words and that powerful climax of the speech. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take one minute of silence to share your feedback with Anju in private chat. Tech Pastor, kindly manage the spotlight and timer, please show me a red card at the end of one minute. One minute is over, Toastmaster Anand. Thank you, Madhav. Ladies and gentlemen, time now for us to have some fun, have some relaxation, because after these two fantastic speakers, I think we are powered enough, triggered enough to try it out for a minute or two our own selves. And today's table topic speaker is someone who has, for a change, taken a break from prepared speaking, and became the table topic master today. Trusty Matrukta, let's have you on the spotlight. Tech master, kindly spotlight Trusty. Hi, Trusty. Let's have a quick audio video check. Hello, am I audible and visible to everyone? Yes, Trusty, you're audible, visible, and keeping or placing everyone in your custody for the next 15 minutes or so. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Trusty Matrukta, your table topic master. Okay, so everyone, good evening. One of the most exciting portions of the Toastmasters meeting is the table topic session. The main objective here is to challenge members and guests to develop their impromptu communications, to effectively think on their feet by answering unrehearsed questions. We also want to give every member the opportunity to speak at each meeting, and we do this in the table topic session. The table topics is specifically designed to develop four essential communication skills, that is listening, thinking, organizing, and speaking. So today, as your table topics master, I will be asking questions or giving prompts pertinent to our theme, the ISC contest. So a quick note on the topic, uh, on the timings, your response must be between one and 2.5 minutes, you'll see a green signal after one minute, which is your minimum time, a yellow signal at one minute, 30 seconds, and a red signal at two minutes. So I also encourage you to use the word of the day, which is pertinent. So let's get started. I will pick someone from the 
the group one first. Priyanka, would you like to go ahead first? Or Mandeep, sorry. Or Priyanka, Mandeep, either of them. Yeah, Shushti, I would like to. Okay, Priyanka, uh, can we have you on, can we have Priyanka highlighted, please? And can we do an audio video check? Just being the devil's advocate over here, and since Priyanka is the evaluator, isn't it fair to give someone else a chance and cover as many people as possible? Sorry, yes. Priyanka, we'll have to <laughs> remove you today. Uh, I would like to call upon Mandeep. Hi, Shristi. Hi, Mandeep. Can we see you? Can we have her highlighted, please? I can hear you already. Diana, um, I see you. You can't so, spotlight me. Can't spotlight you? Yeah. She is, her video is off. I cannot spotlight her. Yeah. All right. Or we okay. can take the spotlight off, uh, Srishti. When her audio comes, it will automatically. Yeah. All right. Okay. That works. Okay. So, Mandeep, uh, can I just hear you for a second with an audio check? Hi, Srishti. You are looking really good. Thank you. Okay. So, Mandeep Kaur, what is one thing you know so well that you can make a speech about it? What is one thing you know so well that you can make a speech about it, Mandeep Kaur? I would say that one thing would be on which I can write speech about is on the story of my mother's life. Because she is the one who has been narrating her stories since my childhood Every day, so Mandi, you know what? When I was at your age, I was used to do this, this, this. And every year when I grow up, she added to that stories. Right now, I'm at the age of 21. And she, before a few days, she was saying, Mandi, at your age, I was having one child. So I asked my mother, what do you want from me? So this is the one thing I could, I could write speech about. Uh, could write speech about. And... For, I would say thank you because I was actually really confused about writing how, on what topic I should write a speech and today you give me an idea and I'm, I'm so happy and I will, after this, I will going to write a speech about that. Okay, thank you. Over to you. Thank you so much, Mandeep. Mm -hmm. I think that is one topic that we can all write speech of, speeches about because I think at every point of time, our parents have told us when we didn't want to go to school, our parents would tell us, you know, when I was your age and I had to go to school, I had to climb a mountain, swim a river infested with sharks and, uh, you know, walk barefoot to the school to even get educated. And here you are, a bus comes to pick you up and you don't want to go. So I think that is a very, very relevant and I'm uh, topic and I'm looking forward to your speech and I know it's going to be a very funny one. So um, who will go next? I think you've set a high bar here. Let's check with our guest. I know. It, yeah, give first topic to Diana, then it is. All right. Okay. So, Diana, I am going to send you a topic here. Okay. Diana, your topic is what does success mean to you? What does success mean to you, Diana? I am also going to add this to chat. So, thank you. You're welcome, Diana. We can check with either Pallavi or uh, Iti or Tena. All right, Iti, would you like to go? Considering we have the same surname or had at one point of time. Same maiden surname. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, it's fine for me. Uh, can, can, can you please uh, uh, repeat once again that topic? Yeah, I haven't said the topic yet. So can we have uh, Iti spotlighted, please? Hi, everyone. Okay. So Iti, your topic is, so Iti Kapoor, is practice 
enough to be a good speaker? Is practice enough to be a good speaker? Iti Kapoor. Yeah, as per my viewpoint, practice is really important if you want to be a good speaker. Uh, because without practice, you will not be a confident speaker, you will not be hands on. Uh, but along with the practice, your passion is uh, really uh, uh, required. If you don't, uh, uh, what if uh, that uh, the topic which you are speaking for is not, uh, um, is not, uh, uh, it's not pertinent to you, then it will be a difficult task to you. Thank you. So thank you so much, Iti, for uh, speaking. And uh, it was your first speech, I think, back after a long time. And yes, yes, yes. And this is for the first time I am into Toastmasters. Oh, okay, okay. So I think that was a great first uh, table topic. And I think the point that you made was also very pertinent about passion. Next, Thanks. we will... Sorry, just give me a second. Something got... It got hung. Okay, next, I would call upon Prerna. Hi. Yeah, hi, Prerna. Can we have you highlighted, spotlighted? Prerna does camera. not have my camera. Yeah. All right. Camera. Okay. My camera. So can we? Can you just say a longer sentence just to do our audio Hello. check? Am I audible? Yes, you are. All right. Okay. So, Prerna, for you, the topic is. How would your life change if you won the international speech contest? How would your life change if you won the international speech contest? So for uh, this, first, you need to gain a lot of confidence and uh, to speak loudly and clear what your thoughts are and uh, it would, uh, I would be very happy once I won the International Speech Award as uh, this show that I have a lot of confidence and uh, I have. Uh, and. And your thoughts should be clear what you are speaking. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Prerna. I think uh, those are some great tips that you have uh, given. And I think we all have, I think, one goal that, you know, if if we can compete or if we can win at some level. So I think that's something that we need to keep practicing, practicing towards. Now, let me call upon... Is there someone who has not been called upon? Pallavi, Pallavi. Pallavi it is. Yeah. Uh, Pallavi, are you here? Can we highlight, uh, spotlight you? Yes, please. Yeah. And let's do an audio video check. Okay. Am I audible? Yes, you are. You're audible and you're visible. Okay. So, Pallavi Bajoria, your topic is... The only person you need to be better than is the person you were yesterday. The only person you need to be better than is the person you were yesterday, Pallavi Bajoria. That's the uh, mantra of success. Uh, what, what we are yesterday, we need to be better than, uh, better than yesterday. That can, that can lead to a successful life. Comparing ourselves with other, looking at the other success and uh, targeting that success will always lead to dissatisfaction. So 
if you really want to judge and measure your success judge it from yourself from by your own by your by your uh, by comparing it yourself from yesterday uh, and trust me uh, if you concentrate on yourself you will be uh, you will be leading a better life uh, and lot of peace uh it happened a lot of time with me when i see the people around me uh they are very successful in all areas whether it's the personal professional in all area of the life and when i start uh following them it always lead to dissatisfaction so from that day onwards i decided to concentrate on me and not to go into their life and in their energy level and to concentrate on myself uh and i i am really happy i may not be uh, as good as them but then i am progressing uh so that is something which is the thumb rule of my life not to go into the other life and concentrate on, on ourselves thank you and over to you thank you i think that's a great uh, perspective pallavi i think competition is definitely the thief of joy and uh, that's you know that that's that's one great way of looking at it that competition will not make you happy it is only knowing that you are better than how you were before so thank you so much uh, what i'll also do is i will read Diana's uh, speech Diana's speech What I feel success that means to my life pertinent well I success felt my whole means whole in my life with help with success together we want uh, working hard and pertinence in your home in my home Okay thank you so much uh, Diana Is there well, anyone else who would uh, like to go because I think um, I would like to go Okay All right okay so we have hey, Why not Priyanka we we denied Priyanka earlier come on Yeah also Mandeep is asking for another go so and uh, not at all possible no yeah, possible today yes all right okay then priyanka it is yeah, i just want to ask priyanka are you an official member of turning point or are you from officially member of some other club turning point okay awesome out okay. priyanka is on there yaar let me go no Priyanka is there. As in, she may not be there. As in, Priyanka, turn on your video or your audio somehow. Let us know. Okay, uh, let's go ahead with Madhav. Priyanka's right. audio is not yet. All right. Okay, uh, Madhav, you're also from TPTM, right? All right. Yes, ma'am. So, <laughs> okay, Madhav, what day is it? It is second February. 2028 what's happening in tptm okay what's happening in turning point toastmasters it is 2nd february 2028 that's 5 years from now what's happening in turning point toastmasters toastmasters mother uh, toastmaster mother <laughs> that's a mind blowing question i would say it is 2nd february 2028 what's happening at turning point of master i am sure there would be another either this madhav or there would be another madhav trying to who may have who may have worked on his skills or who may have uh, who may be working on his skills trying to improve trying to work in different aspects of their life and uh, talking about uh, someone being at turning point of master after 5 years i think 
so i i have a lot to say about it and i i i it's it's tough to recollect it and uh, you know put together and specify it but but i i to be honest i don't don't see myself as an i each year i think that i would now try to move on in my life from those master that's very true i i think i want to move on in my life and i i want to uh do different things but i end up coming here every thursday so uh, that's something that happens with me and uh, i don't want it to happen <laughs> i don't want it to happen after 5 years also so i would certainly not be there uh, there would be another madhav there would be another sister there would be another anant and uh, they may be running this club and that's I, that's what i hope for this is for people's uh, growth this is for people's uh, welfare and uh, yeah that's what it is over to you sisti that was a very tough question yaar <laughs> um tough question yes but i think you had a very pertinent response that if not the few of us there will be other people carrying the legacy of this club forward and i think that is a beautiful thought and i think that's what matters if we have time i don't think i have time nope all right okay so thank you to everyone who participated especially our guests especially the people who have uh, either joined us for the first time or have returned after a long time i think that is those are the kind like you are the kind of people who would keep the club going all the way till 2028 so thank you everyone who participated and now i'll return control to toastmaster of the day anand thank you so much rishti that was a fantabulous table topic session let's have a thorough round of applause for this firecracker of a session thank you rishti keep it up ladies and gentlemen uh, we were talking about the international speech contest a few myths as well as a few tips the biggest question that we have always and uh, before that we have a different question coming up on your screen very soon it may be around the best table topic speaker and best prepared speaker so do mark your choices accordingly i just marked mine and while you answer this question let me pose another question to you which often speakers face and uh, um, i can have uh, you know give you example of one such speaker among here pallavi bajoria she is my mentee she keeps asking me what do i speak about how do i find table top uh, you know speak uh, speech topics or uh, meeting themes and all anju do you also feel the same how do you find your topics palvi do we agree we we have those conversations yes very all right so uh, quickly asking anju anju how do you go about it how do you find your topic well i um have lot of things going in my mind uh, when i try to the when i think that i will give a speech um, i have lot of things going on in my mind and uh, i write the script uh, and after that uh, i will write the topic <laughs> that is how it goes thank thank you anju uh, while we uh, i give my comment on that let's have a quick moment to mark your best table topic speaker as well now my trick to go about it is uh, anju said there are a lot of things going on in her mind i know there are a lot of things going on in my life why don't i just speak about that now do not try for perfection uh, palvi you may want to note it down whatever is happening in your life just make up your mind to talk about it and don't look for perfection i i see a lot of us including my past version struggling with the fact we were trying to make the perfect speech out of it in the first go the first attempt version 1.0 should be all about write whatever you want with the poor grammar with the half hushed ending with maybe 2000 words of a draft maybe 300 words of a draft whatever it is just an unbiased draft write it down now gradually think about how would you envision or see yourself delivering it what would you want your audience to think about after the speech and if you are clear about what you want your audience to think about that one single message 
remember my first tip that one single message then everything that you write as a rewriting or redrafting that is where the real speech becomes i i borrow this quote from a common wisdom i heard from someone else the real speeches are not written they are rewritten winston churchill is a prime example of writing the most scintillating of the speeches you may not agree with his viewpoints especially regarding the south east asia and india being the britain uh, british prime minister but he is considered to be the one of the greatest orators of 20th century because that gentleman was focused on giving each and every word a certain value every word had some weight for him a lot of his speeches be it half a page of a speech uh, he used to rewrite it multiple times in his bathtub uh, smoking cigars after cigars all the night lend gentlemen write down for yourself but rewrite for audience that is my tip number 2 i will give you one short tip after the next session and the next session is where i don't need to give you any tips this is where we will get get our fair assessment of the session general evaluator sneha shish are you ready with your team am i audible you are audible now you are spotlighted and you are visible sneha shish there is a slight static coming in because of uh, maybe a moving connection with the audio jack so it's okay it's okay now uh, the moment it, it it shakes it makes a noise you might want to remove it all together we can hear you directly you can put it in back uh, put it back in when you are not speaking so that will be okay you can unmute yourself now and go ahead you are on mute now it's good or not perfect perfect you have a backup device go ahead go ahead mate you are good okay uh, okay i would start my general ev evaluation session with the evaluation of speaker first and the evaluator and the speak and the evaluator of speaker first is toastmaster madhav over to you toastmaster madhav toastmaster ashish just reminding please uh, time uh, time me toastmaster anshuman how to run a company toastmaster anshuman uh, started with a question and which was a typical opening for the uh for the speech but he was not a he is not a typical speaker in our club he is known for his charming personality whenever he comes on stage he brings a smile on everyone's faces and that is his personality and he is a wonderful orator wonderful speaker today also he involved everyone he made sure that everyone was connecting with him while he was putting out those questions while he was taking everyone's input and one thing that he did uh, he does really well is when people respond to him he always repeat them and just acknowledge every response that he gets and that is that is what toastmaster uh, toastmaster anshuman demonstrated today but what is that that toastmaster anshuman could have done better and there are two three things that i could note down while in his speech that could be uh, uh, that could be fixes that could uh take a speech to take the project or take um, make the project more beneficial to him first of all i think toastmaster anshuman uh, somewhere uh somewhere lacked uh, somewhere misunderstood the objective of the project objective of the project was to uh giving a speech or giving a informative speech and then getting question and the objective was to put toastmaster anshuman on spot to get answers wherein whereas uh, the it was going other way around so that is what uh, the fundamental fix that we could see in his speech that could uh, though it was quite entertaining for all of us but if we talk about benefits to toastmaster anand from the perspective of path from the perspective of his uh, project this could have been a fundamental fix that toastmaster anshuman could tell us give us more glimpses about info, more information about how to run a business then we could have asked a question so he could have uh, you know uh, we could have done two and throw four questions but uh, that was it then secondly i think if even if he was asking questions to audience the basic 
there were some basic uh, problems with the type of questions he was asking. For example, if he was asking about a business, if he would have, for example, talked about a pen, I want to start a business of a pen. How would you sell it? Or what I could go do wrong while selling a while selling pens in my business? I was not I, I was not getting a clear picture of the product that he was trying to sell. So that's why when he was asking people, they were finding it difficult to answer those questions. So that is uh, the trick that I would want Toastmaster Anshuman to implement that when he asks question, he, he need to be very specific because he doesn't want audience to get uh, get into a spot and feel that you know they don't have anything any anything uh, complex or technical to speak about. So those were the fixes. Uh, that could make Toastmaster Anshuman's project more beneficial to him. And uh, I think he is a great orator. He is a great speaker. And I, I, every time he comes on stage, I look forward to his speeches. Uh, it was another speech like that. But uh, looking forward to his, uh, looking forward to him to repeat this project with implementing this feedback. Over to you, John Welter. Thank you, Toastmaster Mother, for the wonderful report. Uh, report. And you took three minutes, 13 seconds for the evaluation. And sorry, I can't uh, oh, turn on my video because my mobile battery is down. It comes on 2%. OK, uh, now uh, I will go with my second uh, evaluation of second speaker. And his uh, evaluator is Priyanka. Now, OK, over to you, Professor Priyanka. Thank you, General Evaluator. What do you need for an ISC speech contest? Thank you, Anju Pradhan, for giving me this opportunity and learning how to give an ISC speech. Wow, what an energy, what an enthusiasm, the way she was speaking right from the beginning. Attention, and I was attentive. Great start, Anju. You had a very clever way to connect with the audience. If I ask a question, who knows this X, Y, Z? People might reply, I might not. You just took one person from the audience. Anshuman, what do you think? That was a very clever way and little risky, but I will suggest that whoever has switched on the video, you can play the gamble with that person. I mean, ask that person. And you did that. I think you are clever enough in that way. I love the way you did the role playing of the kid. I love the way you were speaking. I was feeling that the kid, the kid inside you, yeah. So, Anju, we have everything here for the ISC speech contest. We need to work on one thing now to win the contest, the content part. The content, when we talk about content for ISC speech, we talk about the message we deliver. Let's take the example that the message which I understood as the spirituality is the uh, essence of all. Spirituality is the solution or answer for everything. If that is the uh, that is my message, it should be uh, pertinent to the, uh, the speech right from the starting, right from the zero, from first step till the last. I felt little disconnect somewhere. For example, one of the examples you had took uh, regarding that uh, you asked a question to your father at the starting that regarding a stern moon stars. As a, as, a, as a student from science, I might not be able to, I might, I might not get satisfied with the answer which your father gave. It's not relevant enough. It's not, I mean, it's not even relevant also that you need to explain a six year child that what will happen to the universe if all things disappear. Rather, if you want to connect with your speech, you can modify it. God is there, he won't let it happen. Rather than saying God is within us, you can just modify it so that you can connect more with your message. Coming with your, uh, the incident happened. I do not want to uh, go in detail because you have already talked about it. The anger, the, all the feelings, I want to feel that Anju. Bring out all the emotions which you have, which you actually felt there. Because that's when the audience connect. Work on your emotions more. And at the last, when you say a spiritualist, he is the solution, is the answer. I could not understand how it is the answer. How did it impacted you? How would you uh, talk about more how the impact was? 
because the impact is the key, not this message. We can, with the audience, we'll connect more with the impact. So in summary, I would say, Anju, you have the body language, you have the energy, you have everything, all the key elements of financial speech. You just need to work on your message delivery. So all the best, Anju, for your speech. I wish you win the contest. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Priyanka, for the wonderful report. Now I will go with my tech team reports. Uh, starting with Grammarian, uh, Toastmaster Asma, can you please show the, your report? Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster Snehashish. So, um, starting from the word of the day, Patinen, uh, Anand has used one time. Iti has used this one time. Priyanka has used it twice. Diana has used one in her speech. Sishti has used it one time. So a uh, round of applause for all of them who have used these words. And coming to the good usages uh, today, um, hypothetically was used. That means by imagining a possibility rather than reality. Then Toastmaster Anand has used simulation. That means an imitation of a situation or process. Uh, and the word retention uh, is also used by uh, Toastmaster Anand. That means the continued use or existence. Then a wildfire, that, is, uh, that means a large fire that spreads quickly. And there's another good word that was used, that is uh, hustle and bustle. That is a great amount of movement or work in an area that is typically quite noisy. Uh, yeah, that's all. And I don't find any major wrong usages today. Yes, over to you, uh, Toastmaster Sneashish. Thank you, Asima, for the wonderful report. Uh, now I will go with, with the timer uh, timer report. Uh, Toastmaster Mother, can you please show the report? So your Sure, sure Sneashish. I would be speaking out the timings taken by each speaker. Toastmaster Anshuman, starting with Toastmaster Anshuman, he spoke for 21 minutes, 35 seconds. Toastmaster Anju spoke for 7 minutes, 29 seconds. Then coming to a table topic speakers. Yes, Anju, I know that is what I was thinking while noting down your time. Then coming to table topic speakers, Mandeep spoke for 1 minute, 11 seconds. Iti spoke for 45 seconds. Trena spoke for 45 seconds. Pallavi speak, spoke for 2 minutes, 6 seconds. Uh, I spoke for one minute, 55 seconds during table topics. Coming to time taken by evaluators, I spoke for three minutes, 13 seconds in the evaluation of Toastmaster Anshuman. And Priyanka spoke for three minutes, 28 seconds for uh, the evaluation of Toastmaster Anju Pradhan. So we have one disqualification in prepared speeches and two disqualifications in uh, table topic speeches that will be considered for the uh, for poll purposes. I couldn't notice time for Toastmaster Diana because she wrote it on the chat box. That's all from my side. Over to you, Toastmaster Nashish. Thank you, uh, Toastmaster Mada, for your report. Uh, now let's go ahead with the few remarks which uh, I have about which I ha uh, have wrote about the meeting. Uh, meeting started on time as well as all the role players joined on time. And there is no disturbance between the meeting, uh, but there is some chit chat in the uh, they, uh, chat, but I don't think which affect the uh, speaker. And about the Toastmaster of the evening and to Table Topic Master, they both have wonderful topics. And I think we all enjoyed that. Uh, and about the grammarian and timer, they both uh, they done their they've done their uh, both very properly uh, that's it from my side i enjoyed your being your general evaluator and i think i done my job in a proper manner thank you over to you Dr. Saidu. am i audible yes you are all right there is a poll going on, ladies and gentlemen. Please mark your choices accordingly. Uh, it was visible to me just now, but suddenly uh, got invisible to me since I'm joining on my mobile. Uh, hopefully, you can see the polls. Especially, just confirm for me if polling was visible to you. All right. 
Ladies and gentlemen, a quick final tip for all of you. It's not a full-fledged ISC mentoring session or such anything such sort. But the tip that I want to give to all of you is this. Do not over-rehearse. Yes, you heard it right. Do not over-rehearse. Or at least uh, do not over-rehearse in the manner that it becomes repetitive, mechanical, robotic. Those emotions are supposed to be natural ones, heartfelt ones on the stage. I have gone through this myself. I have seen a lot of people doing that. Uh, that those emotions or carefully crafted body languages, they look choreographed instead of appearing natural. That is a big rue with Toastmaster speeches a lot of times, including the ones which are at a world championship stage as well. A lot of them look rehearsed for a thousand times or more. And if someone were to see those speeches a second time being delivered, they would have an instant disconnect because they have already seen it happening. So when we have conversations, conversations are natural. Conversations are organic. And that is the trick about delivering your speeches. Have a conversation with your audience. Just like we are doing right now, even if you are not speaking and if you are hearing me for the first time talking around this particular point, are you not having a tacit, passive, non-verbal, yes, shaking of the hand, blinking of the eyes? And that is where we are connecting. Even with the videos off in an online mode, we are connecting. Look for that human movement and do not let it become repetitive or robotic. Especially those aha moments of your speech where there is a big buildup happening and suddenly after that buildup there comes a moment where you feel shattered or in that context you feel helpless or that is the uh, opposite to the crest it is a trough of the moment of your life and you are moving only upwards from there so in that moment that tragedy has to be felt before you even try to communicate it. That is where people become motivated. They don't become motivated just because someone says, hey, I beat cancer or I uh, climb Mount Everest. No, people truly become motivated with your failures. Embrace them. Shristi, I just messaged you something personally. Embrace your failures. Do not try to look for perfection because that will never happen. Even with the... World championship winning speeches in some judges' ballots, they were not 100 out of 100. <laughs> they were here and there, some low marks on something or the other. Humans are supposed to be vulnerable. Embrace the vulnerability. And that is where you become champion. You become a motivation for someone else. Ladies and gentlemen, speeches, do not try them as speeches at all. Make them conversations. Make them anecdotes of your life stories of your life, maybe something simplistic from a slice of your life or maybe a life altering story presented well, whatever it is. If you are having a human moment with me as your audience member, I will feel thankful to you. And that is the ultimate objective of ISC. With that being said, I hand over now to the presiding officer, Madhav Upadhyay to proceed with the meeting as well as uh, take the audience feedback. Did we make a human moment with them today? Over to you, Madam. Thank you, Anant, and thank you for inspiring all of us while talking about the interesting speech uh, contest. I have launched the poll for the best role player. This would be the last poll for, poll for the day. <coughs> do, do cast your votes. And with that, I would like to take feedback from guests and for the guests coming for the first time, I would like to, them to introduce us to as well for our, our audience to know, uh, to know for our members and frequent visitors to know you as well. So I may probably start with, because Toastmaster Anjipadan has her odd video on, I may start with Toastmaster Anjipadan. Hello everyone, once again, I am Toastmaster Anju. I am a doctor by profession, uh, as you 
may have heard in my speech as well. I am from Nepal, Dharantos Masters Club. I am the club secretary and I am also counselor of Dharan Gavel Club. For those who don't know what Gavel Club is, Gavel Club is a club under Toastmasters International for kids from age 7 to 17 years. And I am also a coordinator of Nepal Gavel Clubs uh, of Nepal Country Club and area club growth director, <laughs> Toastmaster, distinguished Toastmaster Anand. I am the area club growth director and not the area director. Maybe one day <laughs> I will become area director as well. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I am very passionate about Toastmasters. I joined in uh, um, 2020, September 2020. Uh, I had no intention of joining Toastmasters, but when I saw my kids taking off in Gavel Club, I said, oh, well, the Toastmasters is for me because I love to speak. <laughs> and uh, like Toastmasters, Tristy, she loves giving speech. I also love giving speech um, uh, because I love to speak. <laughs> but I don't get to give so much speeches because of my busy schedule. And um, I um, will try to come often to Toastmasters, uh, Turning Point Toastmasters because I enjoy being here. Thank you so much and over to you. Thank you, Anju. Thank you, and uh, looking forward to have you more often in Turning Point Toastmasters. Now, we have feedback from Toastmaster Diana. We would read that, but before that, let let me ask Toastmaster Pallavi for feedback. Madhav, I enjoyed the meeting. It's as usual every time, listening to everybody, the inspiration I get uh, so, I mean, it's always good to be uh, with the like-minded people and every time I, uh, you know, attend the meetings, uh, I learn something and that is the biggest achievement and the biggest joy uh, what we have. I mean, what we are yesterday, so we are becoming better than that. <laughs> so, thank, thank you, Madhav. Thank you, Pallavi. And I can, I can remember your, uh, your table toy was on that line, on those lines, no? Now uh, going to I I was a better speaker I was a better listener Sisti. Uh <laughs> going to uh, our uh, next uh, guest we have Toastmaster Iti. Hi, uh, my name is Iti Kapoor. As you all know, I am a chartered accountant by profession. Uh, I belong to Gurgaon only. And it's really wonderful being a part of Toastmaster. This is for me for the first time, but it's quite lively and uh, it's interactive session. So I find it quite interesting and uh, many more things to learn from this and uh, open to have many more sessions with Toastmasters. Thank you. Thank you, Iti. Glad you liked it. Thank and you. Going to our next guest, Prena. Hello, I'm Trena and I am a dietitian by profession and I stay in Gurgaon. Uh, it's like, uh, it's my third time I joined this club. It's been amazing and I would love, love to join more sessions uh, and I've been learning a lot from these clubs. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Prena. And uh, we also look forward to seeing you and listening to you. Uh, now, I would like to read Diana's feedback. She says that I feel that meeting was great. I typed fast in my answer of topics. Yes, Diana, I would say you did type fast. I am sorry that organizer in my mind. Thank you, thank you, uh, Diana. And I would say that you organized it quite too fast and you typed very fast and gave your answer very quickly. Uh, if I would have counted, it would have been less than two minutes probably. Uh, thank you for answering. Now. I think I think that's all we do have. Uh, we do have Mandeep as a segment guest. I would uh, probably uh, Mandeep. Would you like to give feedback? Okay, you would like to take. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure. <laughs> uh, not not having the table like uh, not giving you second chance to speak as in. 
ரீசன் <laughs> I was asking for the another one and I don't think so I should tell about myself for this club because I'm joining from a very long time even I have given my icebreaker in this club so you guys know me Srishti miss that Srishti I will <laughs> share the link with you please don't be sad okay for every time I join it's a very nice day nice meeting and it's like coming back to home back to Mr. President thank you thank you Mandeep Now I would like to announce the winners for of polls starting with the best auxiliary role player it was it was toastmaster ashima ashima congratulations then coming to the second poll uh, which was for best speech evaluator then again it was toastmaster priyanka congratulations priyanka Why do I say again? Because I uh, I lost in both of those them. No, that's why again. <laughs> But Priyanka won by a very good margin, I would say. So uh, going to the next uh, next poll, best table top speaker, best table topic speaker is a tie between Prena and Pallavi. But because uh, Prena didn't speak for more than forty five seconds, as in more than one minute, so she is disqualified. So Prena, just a learning for you. Try to. hang in there hanging in there for more than 1 minute so that at least you get a certificate when you win when you win a, a table topic contest a table topic best table topic speaker uh, contest now uh, coming to the coming to the best best prepared speaker uh, it goes to uh, it goes to by, uh, toastmaster anju pradhan by a very huge margin but uh, she would have anyways won it because she uh, toastmaster anjuman was disqualified but congratulations to toastmaster anjuman and uh, we hope that you also uh, you also win the isc likewise this uh, likewise this poll uh, coming to the last last poll that we have best role play best role player again toastmaster anant congratulations so congratulations to everyone who uh, won the poll and uh, i think i think we uh, don't have any uh, any announcement to make so i would pause the recording i would stop the recording and